This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I will rejoice and be glad in Amen. 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 Truly, this is a good day that the Lord has made. Amen. It doesn't matter what the weather is on the outside. It doesn't even matter what the conditions is on the inside of this building. It just matters that God gave us grace to wake up this morning. And so we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Y'all know about Amen. you. I've heard that we serve a mighty good God. Amen. Amen. When things are not going the way we want to, he is still good. That's right. Says, when we are faithless, he remains faithful. Amen. 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 Let the sun shine on this cloudy day. Amen. 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 So I'm going to praise him this morning. Amen. Amen. I want to have a thankful heart. Amen. You know, we turn the clock back, amen. There is no clock in heaven, amen. amen. So every day is a day of thanksgiving. Yes, 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 every day is a day of rejoice. Yes, yes. Every day is a day of praising God. Amen. Yeah. 
There 
verses 1 through 16. And it reads, Now Elijah the Tishbite, a Tish in Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years, except by my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, Depart from here, and turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Sherry, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the brook Sherry, that is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And after a while, the brook dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Rise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And then I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. Amen. The jar of flour shall not be spent, mm -hmm. and the jug of oil shall not be empty mm -hmm. until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she, she and he and her husband ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, mm -hmm. according to the word of the Lord Amen. that he spoke by Elijah. Amen. This morning I want to speak on the subject. God provides Amen. during our time of shortages. Amen. 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 So the question I want to start out with this morning is, what do you need more of? What is it this morning that you have a shortage of? Maybe you don't have a shortage of water or food. Maybe you have just a shortage of patience. Maybe you were in a hope drought, and you lost all hope in the situation you find yourself today. Or maybe you're saying, I need more strength. I'm worn out, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. Maybe for others of you, your greatest shortage is a shortage of time. Or perhaps your greatest bump is in the area of finances, where it seems like there's more months than there is money in your household. Well, whatever the greatest area of your drought or your shortage is this morning, whatever that you are expecting or uh, experiencing the shortage of, I want you to listen very closely to me today. Because the shortage that Eli and Elijah experienced and the famine that the widow experienced, God wants to show us how he's able to turn a little we have into a lot. Amen. Think about it. If God can meet the needs of a person like Elijah, who the Bible says was just a man just like us, don't you think he can meet any need that you and I have? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're facing a drought or a famine or any shortage this morning, yeah. I want you to lift up five instructions the Lord gave to Elijah in order to provide for his needs, to get him out of that drought or that dry spell. And so first, to get out of a dry spell or famine, we must leave our comfort zone. Amen. Amen. God basically told Elijah, if you're going to have your needs met, prophet man of God, 
you're going to have to get up and go to Zarephath. And when we read verses 1 through 8, it doesn't tell us how long Elijah had been staying by the book, church, where God had told him to hide out in verse 3. But it's estimated it was somewhere around two years. And then there was something strange when I looked at verse 3 when God told Elijah go hide out, amen. He, you know, this is a prophet of God. He didn't tell him to preach or teach. He just tell him, hide out in that, in, in that book, amen. amen. And so sometimes God wants you to just hide out from people, hide out from things, amen. 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 And so grant Elijah's living conditions were not a three-star hotel. Yes. But they come home to him. Amen? Amen. And so when we look at verse 4, we find that Elijah's meals were catered to him daily by meals on wheels. Amen? Amen. In the form of a raven. Yep. The point is, I mean meals on wings rather, the point is that Elijah had gotten comfortable with his life. And many times, our own comfortable level is the biggest obstacle Amen. to having our needs met by God. Amen. You hear me? Amen. Sometimes being comfortable is a hindrance to God meeting our needs. Amen. Amen. We would rather deal with the hassles of old problems than the challenge of doing something new. True, our present situation may not be all it should be, but we recognize and say, well, it's familiar, amen. Mm -hmm. So listen to me today. Security is the greatest enemy of success, amen. Mm -hmm. amen. Elijah had freedom of choice when God came to him. He could have said no when God told him to leave from the book shirt where he had gotten accustomed to, amen. And he could have said no when God told him to go to an unknown place, amen. But if he had said no, saints, it not only would have affected him, but it would have affected a widow and her son. So the decisions we make, saints, not only affect us, they don't always affect just our family. Amen. It has broader implications, amen. So we have to be careful, amen, about saying no to God, amen. amen. You see, if Elijah had said no, that widow woman that we're going to talk about in a few minutes and her son would have died. Therefore, God needed Elijah to move when he told him to because there was a poor woman and her son about to starve to death. And so sometimes God allows situations to happen to us to get us up to move. Amen. 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 He allows the things in my life to get me up to move. Amen. I was content that you heard me say, as for what watches today. Amen. But God has allowed me to become uncomfortable, set some situations up. Amen. For me to move out of my comfort zone amen. and go away. Amen. 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 To help us to move on up out of our comfort zone. 
So God is saying to someone listening, it's time to get up. Mm. It's time to get back. Mm. It's time to move out. Because your blessing is just around the corner. Amen. Amen. And it waits those who are willing to go forward an extra mile with God to get it. It's your time. So God said, go get your blessing. God is not bringing it to you. He is sending you to your blessings. Amen. 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 Now the second instruction that God gives Elijah is more implied than this spoken. But it's just as real when we read the text. And so the second thing God wants us to know is to get out of our dry spell. We must let go out of fear. Amen. Let go out of fear. Amen. When God said to Elijah, go at once to Zarephath and stay there, fear might have gripped his heart. You know, remember Jezebel, for those who know the story about Jezebel, you know, the Jezebel had a hit out of Elijah. That's why he ran for his life and first hid in the cave, amen. So Jezebel, the wicked witch of the east, was still out there trying to find Elijah to kill him. And now her father was now the king of Sidon, and God was sending this Elijah right back into Jezebel's backyard. God was sending Elijah out of fine pain into the fire. Amen. Don't feel like that does that sometimes to you, amen. And on top of that, Zarephath was 90 miles away. And that's been a long walk across open and unprotected land. By a wanted man, when there were such parties out there looking for him everywhere. Amen. Amen. But when the fear of change overwhelms us after God has clearly told us to go somewhere or to do something, we need to remember three things, saints. First, we must remember God knows where we are. When we are trying to live for God and obey his command the best we can, and still things start getting harder and harder for us, it's easy to feel like God has forgotten us and that he doesn't know our name, he don't know our situation. But I'm here to tell you this morning, say, that God knows everything about you. Amen. He knows Amen. where you are. He knows Amen. where you're born. He yeah. sees the tears. He sees the weakness in his body. Yeah. But God knows exactly where we are because he's there with us. But not only did God know where Elijah was, because he had sent him there for the verse 3, amen, and he knew where Elijah was supposed to go, because he was sending him to another location for ministry, amen. You see, the, the, the river had dried up, his ministry had been completed then, so sometimes our ministry when we dries up, and God is sending us or telling us to do something else, amen, amen. He did not you know, always want you to see, you know, I I have wanted to usher all my life. Say, I love usher. I just love usher. Amen. But Pastor Franklin told me, God has elevated you from usher to the pulpit. Put, put that, put that off that white dress and put on a white bow. Amen. You know, sometimes men drives up. We don't keep doing the same thing the rest of our lives. There's more for us to do. Amen. 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 And so, uh, 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 then the second thing the fear sets in. We have to remember that God also knows where we are going. Amen. Amen. None of us know what God has in store for our future. And I'm one that's glad about that. You see, if I knew everything uh, that I was going to be facing, amen, I'll be scared and I wouldn't have to sleep at night. Amen. So that's why God led Elijah and he leads us out of our dry season <coughs> one step at a time, one day at a time, amen. And so God said, first of all, to, to Elijah, he told the man about, arise and get up, amen. And then after Elijah had done that, then he proceeded to say, now go to Zarephath, amen. So at first, our man, these instructions were not so bad to Elijah. But then the other shoe drops, and God tells Elijah, now stay there. Amen. Now, if you like a, a real like Elijah, now we are willing to go through a, a season of testing for a little while. But we don't want to stay in that test.
too long. Amen. amen. We don't want to stay in the fire too long. Amen. amen. But God told Elijah, now I'm sending you there. Now stay there until I tell you to move again. Amen. amen. So we become like the Jews, the Israelites, who prayed for release from their Egyptian captives. Amen. But when they hit, uh, God delivered them. But when they hit a rock spot, they want to go back to where God had delivered them from. Amen. Mm -hmm. So don't want to go back. Amen. Even though the grass might seem greater on the other side of the picture where you came from. Amen. God wants us not to retreat. He wants us to keep moving forward. Amen. Mm -hmm. So don't mm -hmm. desire those good old days. Amen. Yeah, it's good if the church was packed out like it used to be. Amen. But God has us right here okay. in the city. And so we can even rejoice. One glad God has us. Glory what God has us. Amen. Don't think about those good old days. I mean, the truth we told, they weren't that good. Amen. 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 They weren't that good. Amen. They don't seem so good. Amen. So we don't want to face the future. Amen. amen. And so they have forgot, amen, the Israelites, that the, that the way to the promised land was not honorable and free. Amen. Like us, we want to go to heaven. But none of us want to die again. Amen? Amen. And it's at that point, we even need to remember a third truth about God. When the fear of change come upon us, we have to remember that God has already prepared the place for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So remember Amen. this. Wherever God tells us to go, Satan, he will get there first. Amen. Therefore, there is no need to fear what God has in store for us in the future. But again, what we forget is wherever God tells us to go, he's already been there and taken care of all the what ifs. And if some what ifs happen, it's because he's allowed those what ifs to happen. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if we want God to do a miracle in our lives. Amen. We can't try and position ourselves by doing what we think will get us to our goal. We just have to trust God and go. Be like Abraham. Amen. God told him to get up and go to an unknown place. But it was not unknown by God. We must replace our fear with the faith that God has already prepared a place for us. And he would not direct us to that place that he would not be. Because he would never leave us. He would never abandon us. He would never forsake us. Amen. Amen. And the third thing now, to get out of a dry spell. My Lord. We must look for God's provision when we get to where God sends us. Again, God not only prepared a place for Elijah, but he prepared provisions for him. Amen. The second part of verse 9 says, Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Remember that statement. God told Elijah, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Did you catch that? God had already talked to this widow about meeting Elijah's needs. All you had to do was to find her. Now, if you know anything about widows in that day, and even some of this in our day, you know it's not like going up to a lady who's barely making it on her monthly disability check and saying, hey lady, how about providing room and board for me for the next year and a half? It just doesn't seem right, Saints. If God told me, Pastor, I want you to go to Mississippi and don't worry about a thing because I've already provided a person to feed you the whole time you're there. And I probably, when I get there, I'll probably start looking around for somebody with some money. Not some poor person. Amen? Amen. Amen. But how many of us know the Lord doesn't always work? The way we think it should work. Many times, the people who have the most give the least. Yeah. It's a proven fact that when it comes to charitable giving, the rich can't exactly be described as generous. One study found that households with income below $10,000 give away an average of 2.8% of their income 
while those with incomes between $50,000 and $100,000 only give away 1.5%. So don't look at the obvious places for God's provision. Many times, he provides for us in ways we would never imagine. That's what it was for Jesus, amen? They were looking for a Messiah, a Messiah rather, that was probably rich and amen, that was warrior and all those things. And here comes Jesus, yeah. the Messiah, riding on a donkey, amen? amen. He didn't fit the description of a Messiah. But God had already chosen Jesus to be a Messiah. And he already told the people to be our Messiah, not our Messiah, but to help us, amen. amen. Now, true, God provides in mysterious ways. But the important thing is that he does provide. Can you get it with me? Amen. 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 The enemy may be trying to worry you by pointing out the impossibility of what you're believing God to do. He has you looking at what you lack instead of looking at the one who lacks nothing. Amen? Amen. Now listen to me now. Because we're going to get out of a dry spell, overcome a famine. We need to know that God has already provided for everything we need. Yes, the economy is looking bleak right now. But we must know that God is a provider. Amen. Amen. We know that God will supply our needs. Amen. Amen. It might be day by day. It might trickle down, amen. But look what God has brought you from, amen. Yes, yes. He has brought you from a mighty long oh, way, amen. amen. And if you check your record, amen, yes, yes. you will yes. find that God has been provided for you down to That's the right. ages, amen. Yes. And so sometimes while we are trying to figure things out, God has already worked on our amen. Yes. And just as God spoke to the will of his time, I believe that God is speaking to someone right now about your particular need. Yeah. And at that proper time, he would use that person or person to meet it. But like I said, it won't necessarily be the way we think. And it's going to require that we follow this fourth instruction that's given to Elijah, which is to get out of a dry spell of famine, we must lose our pride. Yeah. Mm, mm. Elijah said to this widow woman in the latter part of verses 10 and 11, he said, please, may I get a little jar of water and bring me a little piece of bread? Now, just imagine, saints, stumbling into Zarephath as a foreigner. You walk 90 miles in the desert, and you're really thirsty, and you're hungry. So you sit down and notice a widow gathering sticks. And you say something like this to her, mm, excuse me, ma'am, but could you spare me a glass of water? And by the way, while you're at it, can you get a piece of bread also? You see, I imagine Elijah really didn't know what he was getting himself into. Because he asked the phrase, and by the way, could you get me a piece of bread? I imagine this will just broke down began to sob, and the same in between us. I don't have any bread. In fact, all I've got for my son and me is just a handful of flour in a jar, and just a little bit of oil. And the reason I'm out here gathering sticks in the first place is so I can go home, make a fire, prepare our last meal, eat it, and then die. I told you to remember something. God has already commanded this woman to provide for Elijah. But at this point, she must have forgotten that God has spoken to her ahead of time. That Elijah was coming to town, and it was her responsibility to look after him, to feed him. Perhaps, though, when, when God had given the instruction to this woman, she wasn't in such bad strength. Like us sometimes, saints, sometimes, when God doesn't change our situation right away, or when things change from good to worse, we forget about his promises. Yeah. Yeah. But Elijah wasn't intimidated. He knew enough about God that this, this uh, woman must have been sent to him. And here's what Elijah knew. 
He knew that we can't get a blessing without being a blessing. Amen. 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 Know that the very person Elijah was supposed to be provided, that, that God said to provide for Elijah, God now tells Elijah to provide for her. That's the way God works. Mm -hmm. God makes sure that both the giver and the receiver eventually switch places. The receiver sometimes becomes the giver, and the giver sometimes becomes the receiver. So God is saying, we can't be a receiver unless we are willing to be a giver. Amen. Amen. In the same way, yes. we can't be a giver unless at some point we are willing to put aside our pride and Amen. become a receiver. Amen. Now I confess, this was a hard thing for me to comprehend because I love, love to give and I hate it to receive. Amen. However, God brought to my attention that my pride was getting in the way of the giver being a blessing. Just like it was a blessing for me to give, it was also a blessing for the other person to give. And so God said, let go of your pride. Amen. You might not think you need anything, but receive it anyway. Because God has put that person in your pathway to be a blessing so they can be blessed in return. Amen. 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 And then I love about God. He's such a matchmaker. Amen. Amen. He puts people together who need each other. Amen. Well. People who help each other find a solution to each other's problem. Elijah and this widow needed each other. Elijah needed food and this woman needed faith. This woman had food, but it wasn't very long without, it wouldn't last very long, rather, without Elijah's faith. Amen. Don't you love God? Amen. 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 And sometimes you wonder, why? God always tells me to do this for somebody else. Amen. 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 He's matching you up with somebody who needs what you need. Help somebody. Amen. Help somebody. Amen. And so the fifth thing, the last thing, to get out, get out of our dry spell or famine, we must give out of what we have. Yeah. When we read verse 13, it sounded kind of selfish. Here's Elijah asking this poor widow to go and make a cake for himself first and then make one for her son, herself and her son. But what we don't understand is that Elijah was standing before this widow as God's representative Amen. and telling her to put God first. Yes. In the same way, I believe I stand before you as God's representative when I say, if you want to see God's provision in your dry season, mm. put him first Amen. in every area of your life. Amen. 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 It's a miracle. It's a miracle after miracle in the Bible. God obligated the individual to take a step of faith to take some kind of risk, to take some kind of action before the need was met. Listen to this. In the story of the part of the Red Sea, Moses first had to stretch out his hand over the ocean before he would part. Amen? Amen? Before the walls of Jericho fell, people had to first walk around it for seven days. In 2 Kings, before naming the level was healed of leprosy, Elijah required him to walk seven times in the Jordan River. Jesus required a blind man to wash out the mud he had put in his eyes before he could see again. Yeah. So why does God require these kinds of actions from us? It's not to embarrass us. It's not to make us look silly, amen. But he requires us to take action so we can participate with our steps of faith in the solution to our own problems. Believe it or not, saints, God desires our commitment of faith in solutions to our problems. Yes. We think of what the widow had to give, but we forget that Elijah had to give too. Remember, he was in the same boat as this woman, but he gave this woman hope 
and faith. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to give out of our need also. Because if we learn to give help when we are helpless, if we learn to give hope when we ourselves are hopeless, if we learn to give faith when we ourselves are faithless, I declare, declare the decree that God will give us uh, an inexhaustible supply of all these things ourselves. Saints, if we want to make a difference in people's lives, like Elijah made a difference in this widow's woman's life, then learning how to give out of our need is basic training. Because this widow gave out of her need. Verse 15 and 16 says, she and her household ate for many days after being obedient. Now, this doesn't mean that she had everything she wanted, but she had everything that she needed. Well, when we have come to the end of our resources, and God comes through in a miraculous way, we are more than satisfied. Now, in case you haven't noticed, this same miracle between Elijah and this widow woman is repeated hundreds of years later when Jesus fed the 5,000. When Jesus did it, a little boy was called upon to donate his small lunch. Now I think that this widow woman and the lady had a lot in common. And we can learn two things from their faith. First, they both gave what they had. They weren't asked to give something they didn't have. But they were willing to give what they did have, no matter how insignificant it seemed. So never underestimate what God can do to ordinary people yes. and limited resources yes. when it's given to him in faith. Amen. Again, and the second thing is, they both gave all they had. Mm -hmm. The young boy didn't have another lunch stashed away in a plastic bag. And this woman didn't have a secret bottle for food. But they gave all they had. Mm -hmm. And the result of in a miracle, we can't hold back anything from God, saints. Because that one little thing we hold back may be what God was keeping God from working a big thing in our lives. Amen. So before we despair, before we give up and lose all hope that God will make a way for us, take inventory, not what we have lost, but what we have left over. Yes. Then we want to give out your need and watch God do a miracle. To today's text is tailored to teach us not to give up on God. Because this woman was at the point of giving up on life when she told Elijah that she had only enough food for herself and her son to eat. Saints, don't you know that when you give up on life, you are giving up on God? Right. Because God is the sustainer and the giver of life. Amen. And the truth of the matter is we should never give up on God. In other words, we should never put a period for what God has put upon. Because when we're up to nothing, the God is always up to something. Even though my situation was looking bad, even though my situation looked hopeless, even though she was at the point of giving up, but know that when we are at our worst, God is at his best. Amen. And he has a way of showing up and sustaining us Amen. in the midst of life's most miserable moments. Is there anybody here this morning and your situations look dark and the, the, the dilemmas of life seem to be getting the best of you? Without encouraging you, don't give up. On God. Amen. God can take a little and turn it into a lot. Amen. He can turn our situations around. Because with faith in God, Amen. all things are possible. You see, our brothers Amen. and my sisters, we don't live on man's explanations, Amen. but we do live on God's promises. Amen. But we must take our eyes over the little and walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Because through faith, God can make a way Amen. out of no way. Amen. You see, through God, 
a little money becomes much money. Amen. When it comes to God, a little joy becomes much joy. Amen. Amen. When it comes to God, a little hope becomes much hope. Amen. When it comes to God, a little faith becomes much faith. Yes. When it comes to God, a little strength yeah. becomes much strength well. when we put our trust in the almighty God. Yeah. Because for God's sake, burdens become blessings. Yeah. Prisoners become pardon. Yeah. Gloom becomes grace. Yeah. And sinners become saints yes. when we trust in God. Yeah. And the reason why is because Jesus died on a blood soaked cross yeah. on a mountain called Calvary. They played him in a bar or two. Mm -hmm. But Aaron, did you hear me say? Aaron, son of woman. Jesus got up yeah. with all power yeah. in his hand. Yeah. And he took the love we had and gave us a lot yeah. in return. Yeah. Yeah. He took a word like us yeah. and gave us eternal life. He took our blindness yeah. and gave us sight. Yeah. Yeah. He took our losses and gave us direction. Amen. He took our sin yeah. and washed us white as snow. Amen. He took Amen. our weakness and gave us some grace. Yes. He yes. gave us yes. a new name. Yes. He gave us a new walk. Yes. He gave us a new talk. Yes. He gave yes. us a new yes. name. Yes. Yes. Why? Because he went to the cross. 
accept the gift of God. Amen. 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 Is there one? Is there one in the house that's willing to call and depend on the name of Jesus to give their heart to him? Amen. Amen. You can come forth. Amen. Put your hand in the hand of the deacon, mm -hmm. of the pastor. Amen. And he will do it. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 He is yeah. our shepherd. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is our shepherd. Amen. And he's waiting. Is there anyone here in the mm -hmm. He has me free. Yes, yes. Oh, Blessed, 
and passed around and said, this is my cup, my blood. Drink it as often as you can in remembrance of me. We only do communion on the first Sunday. But truth, the truth be told, we can do it every day. Amen. 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 So we have set aside this first Sunday of the month to observe Holy Communion. I'm going to ask at this time if Deaconess um, De 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 in training, Rebecca Collier, if she just stand where she at and just pray over to Communion.
Amen. 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 Kevin. Amen. 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 Don Mitchell wants you to pray for John while traveling overseas, okay. working overseas. Come 
So we pray, God, that you go up and down the corridors of those hallways, Lord God. Go into each room, Lord God. Lord God, let your healing virtue begin to flow, Lord God. Yes. That you will revive, Lord God. Yes. Give them strength, Lord God, in their extremities, Lord God. Give them strength to walk and get out of yes. bed, Lord God. Reduce fever, Lord God. Heal pneumonia and arthritis, Lord God. Heal, Lord God, whatever is ailing us, Lord yes. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Jacob Cruz, Lord God, yes. other military ones, Lord God. Lord God, we know it's hard, especially for the young people, Lord God. Be away from home, Lord God. Some might be still on the USA soil, or some might be on foreign soil, Lord God. But Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, be a fence around the military, Lord God. Lord God, over in Iraq and Ukraine, Lord God. Iraq, Lord God. Russia, Lord God. Other places, Lord God. Every military base, Lord God. Every embassy, Lord God. We pray, God, for security, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for peace, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Barack Obama, Lord God, and all that he's going through, Lord God. You know the needs, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for for, for, for every, every illness again, Lord God. We lift up, Lord God, John Unclesby as he's traveling overseas for work, Lord God. Lord God, you have them going here and there, Lord God. But we pray, Lord God, that you just let your spirit go with him, Lord God. Hide him, Lord God, in the shadow of your wings, Lord God. Protect him from danger, seen and unseen, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you protect him from illnesses, Lord God. Protect him, Lord God, from other things, Lord God. So we ask you, Lord God, be with him as he travels. And be with God, Lord God, as he spends so much time away from home, Lord God. So we pray that you be her company keeper also, Lord God. And be the company keeper for, for the military spouses, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for Terrence Dyson, Lord God, the pastor and his grandmother, Lord God. Yes. Lord God, we know that he loved her, Lord God. She yes. stepped in yes. with his mother, Lord God, transformed her, went on to glory. So, Lord God, we just pray for Terrence, Lord God. Yes. Let him know that he's still not alone, Lord God. Yes. That you are still with him, Lord God. Comfort him, Lord. Even though his heart might be broken, Lord God, yes, that was yes. God. So going through the bereavement process, Lord God, we ask you to comfort him, Lord God. Yes. Comfort him right now in the name of Jesus, Lord yes. God. And Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for those who are missing and backslidden, Lord God. We ask you to bring them back to the fold, Lord God. Those who are unsaved, Lord God, they are coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, God. We pray for the mental, Lord God, emotional, stressed people, Lord God. We pray for a sound mind, Lord God. We pray for deliverance from drugs, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, yes, anything, yes, Lord God, that also yes, our mind, yes, our yes, 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 yes. deliver right now in the name yes, of Jesus, Lord yes, God. Yes. Set them free from bondage, yes, Lord God, they, yes. because they have to have it, Lord God, to survive, Lord God. Yes. But Lord God, let them know that they need you more, Lord God. Yes, You're yes, the God. one that can do it. They can't do it on their own, yes, Lord God. Even though family and you know what, they want their deliverance, Lord God. But we pray that you instill something in every individual, Lord yeah. God. That they don't want deliverance for themselves, Lord yeah. God. And Lord God, when you deliver, Lord God, let them not return back Lord yes. Lord God, of what you deliver them from, Lord God. Yes. Give them a new taste, a new desire, Lord yes. God. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for the seniors and the youth, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray for all this violence that's going on, Lord God. Lord God, balance in the home, balance on the job, balance in the streets, Lord God, balance everywhere, Lord God. We are not safe, Lord God, even in our own homes, Lord God. Not even in school, Lord God. So we are praying, Lord God, for you to be the fit around, Lord God. That you'll change hearts, Lord God. Change hearts right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, that you are the giver and the sustainer of life. But your word says, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not so, Lord God, take us back to the basic commands, Lord God, to do those things, Lord God, and even to honor mother and father, Lord God. So we pray, God, again, Lord God, if you'll turn the situation around, Lord God, and remove the fear, Lord God. We know, Lord God, it's hard to go out sometimes, Lord God, for fear, Lord God. Even fear, Lord God, of being in our own homes, Lord God, they come in, Lord God. We come against all the stealing, Lord God, the convertible, convertible, Lord God, whatever that is, Lord God, the cars. 
We pray, Lord God, that we come, we come against the, the carjacking, Lord God. We pray again, Lord God, that people, Lord God, will work for what they need, Lord God. That they not steal, Lord God. That they don't have it right now, Lord God. Let them be able to wait, Lord God, until they get the means, Lord God, to get what they need, Lord God. And a lot of times, Lord God, it's not what they need, it's what they want that they go after, Lord God. Because we know that you will supply our needs for us. Then, Lord God, we pray for the care givers, Lord God, Phyllis Bellamy, Jackie Harris, and Daryl Cruz, and Patricia Pormis, and others, Lord God, who are taking care of loved ones, Lord God. Most of Lord God, they are taking care of parents, Lord God, or spouses, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we just pray, God, that you would just help them, Lord God, give them the strength, Lord God. They get tired and they get weary, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for travelers, Lord God, those who are, Lord God, are beginning to travel, Lord God. We're entering into the holiday season, Lord God. So we are praying, Lord God, as people begin to go, move about more, Lord God, that you will protect them, Lord God, from the virus, Lord God. Protect them, Lord God, as they go over there the highways and airways or whatever means they are traveling, Lord God. So we pray, Lord God, that your, your grace, Lord God, will surround them, Lord God. We are praying, Lord God, for Bridget, Lord God, you know the love she has for her nephew, great nephew, Hunter, Lord God, you know about that situation, Lord God. And so we put it in your hands right now, God, that you will move, Lord God, that you will open up doors that have been closed, Lord God, that you move, Lord God, in that situation, Lord God. We pray over Hunter, Lord God. Lord God, that child, there's a child, Lord God, who's going through so much, Lord God. So we pray, Lord God, and we plead the blood of Jesus over his life, Lord God, over his body, over his heart, over his mind, Lord God. That you will shield him, Lord God. That his heart will become harder, Lord God. So we pray, Lord God, that he continue to stay loving and kind, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, that he knows, Lord God, that somebody is praying for him and loving him, Lord God. Even, Lord God, when we don't see that and feel that love in return, Lord God. And so we pray for other children, Lord God, that might be in that future, Lord God. Lord God, we know that you're close to the children, Lord God, and widows and orphans. And so, Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, over them right now, God. And then, Lord God, we pray again for Mother Beth, Lord God. We pray for her healing, her strength, Lord God. Amen. We pray, Lord God, that you would touch her body, Lord God. Lord God, you know what she's going through and where she's at, Lord God. And so we pray, Lord God, for everybody, Lord God, that's close to her, Lord God. Yeah. We are praying, Lord God, that she gets the best of care, Lord God. She's been on the battlefield for a long time, yeah. along with Mother Jerry again, Lord. So we pray, Lord God, over these warriors, Lord God, yeah. whose bodies now begin to deteriorate, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we just pray, God, that you will keep them, Lord God, in their old age, Lord God. Let the old age, Lord God, the latter days be better than the younger days, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray, God, for pastors and clergy, Lord God. We lift them up unto you, Lord God. We pray for their strength, Lord God. We pray over the offering, Lord God. That receive, Lord God. We pray that you continue to multiply, it, Lord God. We pray that you continue to keep this church, Lord God. Doors open, Lord God. Yes. Oh, Lord God. Lord God, that you will, whatever we stand in need of, God, that you will do it for us. Yes, Lord. Yes. Help us be yes. faithful in yes. our giving, Lord God. Yes. Help us be faithful, Lord God, in our receiving, Lord God. Yes. So, Lord God, we just thank you for what you do, Lord God. And I pray over the transportation for Barbara, Lord God. Yes. I pray, Lord God, that you will supply transportation for her, Lord God. Yes. We pray, Lord God, that you give her reliable transportation, Lord God. Yes. We pray, Lord God, for the Adams family, Lord God, who's supposed to be moving this week to St. Mary's County, Lord mm -hmm. God. We pray, Lord God, for a permanent residence for them, Lord God. So we pray, Lord God, that you would just so continue to keep everyone in the sound of my voice, Lord God. We love you, God. We adore you, God. And we bless your holy name, God. We give you all praise, glory, and honor, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.